that I don't know what Twitter's seems to be excited about, you know, some other matchups this week. I am jacked up for Miami Louisville this week. This is an opportunity for Miami if they want to be that playoff contending team, dare I say national championship contending team. I'm gonna say it. Say it only be only because only because I'm not saying they're there yet. I'm saying they have an opportunity to look like one this week. They've struggled in some games recently. You're seeing other teams in college football struggling. You're seeing a Texas team haven't really played a ton of competition or, you know, healthy teams. So when you're, you're looking across college football, there's plenty of parity to go around. I mean, there are 30 dogs. We're picking 10-point upsets, and we're like 20% picking 10-point upsets to win straight up. Or Like, that's there's parity in college football right now. Um, unlike we've seen in previous years. This line is four and a half. So what we do on the show, we pick winners and we pick, you know, winner or spread, right, ATS. Miami is going on the road to Louisville. And Jeff Brom is probably, if not one of the best, you know, in-game play callers, game management coaches there is. He lays a couple stinkers sometimes against good teams when he's outclassed. But he also has a very good habit of rising to the occasion, and I do, I do fancy, I do fancy Jeff Brom in spots like these. So Miami, and people are going to look at Louisville and like, well, they're probably not ranked right now. People, I don't know what the AP poll is. I don't really pay that much attention to it. But Louisville, if they are, if they're not ranked, you know, people might overlook this game and be like, oh, well, they beat Louisville. Louisville is a good football team, guys. Louisville is a good football team with some good losses, right? I don't know. I mean, in this game, what needs to happen for Miami, one, to dominate? And what needs to happen for Louisville if they need to win this football game, Christian? Well, I'll start with Miami here. First of all, like, their coaching staff has to get ready after that bye. Obviously, something went wrong the past couple weeks here. Not only, I guess, with Virginia Tech, but then on the road there, you had to come back and, and Cam Ward had to save you there, along with your defense, getting some big stops. I think that kind of gets lost a little bit with a big comeback like that. That defense really buckled down in that fourth quarter and stopped the running game, which has been non-existent for most of the year for Cal, for Cal here. I do trust Louisville, if they do build a lead like that, to be able to close them out. Absolutely. You're talking about Jeff Brom and Tyler Shuck, like you said, Going on a lead, like it's important for Louisville to get out early, get out strong, right? We talked about Cam Ward when he is pressed, right? It's similar to Jeff Brown. Sometimes he rises to the occasion, and more often than not, he does, right? More than, more often than not, he does, and you trust him in those big spots. But sometimes he'll throw that one pass like he did against Cal, the interception yep. crossbody on first and 10. Zero reason to throw that ball, and boom, it gets picked. Picked off, and obviously, you know, that can be massive in a game with the, the margins that could be as small as this one here. So Louisville needs to get off to a fast start, get that crowd engaged. Right? We've seen them have big upsets at home before. I don't love that it's an 11 a.m. kickoff, especially for Louisville coming off a win or a, coming off a, a week last week where they, they really battled with Virginia, and then Miami was able to sit at home and kind of recuperate after the past couple weeks. And also that crossed – Cross distance travel all over the country. We've seen a lot of teams struggle with that this year. Miami struggled too, but got a win. Here's the thing we've been talking about Miami is like we were super impressed early. They dominated Florida, right? They're they're getting after teams that they really should, and that's awesome. And that's something we haven't seen from Miami in a long time. And then they get to conference play, and you've seen them struggle. And it's like, are we, is this the real Miami? Is this a Miami team that's just not you know elite that they can't? break off and dominate opponents that they should or is it going to be a struggle every week week in and week out and need to be bailed out by cam ward and i think like you said we'll answer a ton of questions with this game also louisville too yes right they, they lost to notre dame at, on the road there and all they lost to a really good smu team right now and kevin jennings hot smu team thank you hot smu team and then they went on the road there and they Virginia, by the way, is a super frisky team. I know you look at them like, oh, it's it's Virginia. You should have won by you know a lot more than that. But they have been giving teams a lot of problems this year. They've looked good. They have a, a real chance to make a bowl game here in the ACC, even with a pretty tough back half of their schedule. Ooh. I don't know, man. I, I think these are, by the way, the two most talented quarterbacks in the ACC. Is that crazy to say? Cam Ward uh, and Shuck? Well... I'm going to bite my tongue saying this because I 
absolutely been. Kate Klubnik, Kate Klubnik, Kate Klubnik. <laughs> there I've it is. A, I've been a tier one Kate Klubnik hater, but he has impressed me over the last five weeks. When I say t- t- talented, right? Talented. I think Shuck with his arm and his mobility when he's healthy. And obviously, we know what Cam Ward can do. Really, really exciting. I'll switch to the defensive side here for Miami. I mean, 34 points, 38 points. It's not like Virginia Tech has been world beaters offensively nope. this year. And Cal with Fer- Anna Mendoza, they were missing a lot of pieces too, and they couldn't run the ball. Right? I know it was explosive plays. I get that. But yeah, like, was. but that's Lance but, Kildry. But like, too much think, talent. You think you think Jeff Brom isn't going to be dialing scheming. up explosive plays? Like, he is scheme. Like, he is Mr. Explosive Play in the big game, you know? So, yeah. look, when I look at this, I'm going to pick Miami to win cover, and, and I, it scares me. I hate that so much. When I look at it, I'm like, you got the quarterback edge. You have the line of scrimmage edge. You have the skill position player edge. Um, I, although, you could argue that Louisville's receivers, the way that they've been playing, are comparable to Miami's receivers. But I'll still give Miami the skill position yeah. edge. I'll give Miami the linebacker edge, the D line edge, the off. Like they're they're better at almost every single position. But guess except what? Jeff Brom, except the coaching matchup, that the great is the equalizer, coach. and the great equalizer, and it's a road game, right? So like that scares the piss out of me. But if Miami, look, if they want to propel themselves and launch themselves into college football playoff conversation and the ACC championship, remember they don't play Clemson in the regular season. Like this is a game that they need to have, right? Because you got other ACC teams that are winning ball games. Like mm-hmm. Pitt is winning ball games. You got SMU winning ball games. If you want to make it to the ACC championship, you need to win this football game. Give Miami to win and cover, and I don't feel great about it, which is why it's not a best bet. But here we go. That's exactly it. I, I'm glad you brought that up because yes, Miami is sitting there, super pretty, six in the country, six and zero, undefeated in conference play. But here's the thing. You look at the the top of that that conference there, like you met, you just mentioned, Clemson, Pitt, SMU. You do not play those teams, so you have no chance to make up ground, right? Those teams can go on and continue to win football games, and you do not control your own destiny if you lose this football game. And that also being said, to Louisville only has one loss, so they jump ahead of you in the standings too, with a win at home here. But that's the thing, man. You look at their schedule, Miami. Yes, you're you're not playing Clemson, Pitt, SMU. And the rest of the way after this Louisville game, it's super, super winnable. Now, those are games that can absolutely, absolutely be lost. And I'm sure Miami fans, I'm not going to jinx you because we know exactly how those games go. Miami, Miami fans know that they can lose just about any of those games on any given day. Exactly. But I'm with you. I think the talent here is too good for Miami. I think the bye week was super, super important for them to get settled, to kind of hone in and really work on their craft and make sure Cam Ward – is dialed like he always is, and that defense too makes some plays. Hopefully, get some healthy pieces there. But damn, man, it's first of all, what a way to start Saturday, 11 a.m. Yep, Miami at Louisville, major, major implications here. Louisville's team, a lot of people had dark horses. Now they had a tough schedule, which I think kind of drew people away from that. But they're going to get people fits here. You you know, Brown always. You know, this is game. I don't think Miami's overlooking Louisville for at all, at all. No. But this is one of those games. This is a spot where Jeff Brown reminds me that I'm an idiot for being yeah. against him. Real quick, too. I do think, and not that I'm comparing the two, okay, but I do think the best matchup to have before Miami might be Virginia because you're playing a guy in Calandria who I'm not saying he's the same as Cam Ward, but you want to talk about just like extending plays and making crazy plays, right? The highs and lows that come with Cam Ward. <laughs> yes, it's significantly different different and there's a reason why Calandria it's is not more exaggerated a, yeah absolutely but you're talking about a guy with <sighs> maybe yeah i hope that makes sense i'm not i'm not trying to compare the two obviously i love Calandria. obviously cam ward is i think he's the best quarterback in the ucc it's not even really close right now the way he's playing and the way he can elevate his football team but you know what i'm saying with, with Calandria, you have the extending plays you have the, the the ability the talent there um it's just obviously not as consistent as cam ward which makes cam ward so so dangerous yeah, and I'll say this for Miami fans. Hopefully I can make them happy here. <clears throat> if Miami loses this game and Cam Ward plays well, this it should not deduct Cam Ward and this Heisman. He has done way too much for this team to be not part of that conversation still, even if they lose. like I, yeah. I hate how Heisman Trophy voters look at the, the wins and losses 
you know, and thankfully they didn't do that with Jaden Daniels, which is why I cashed out big time, which is awesome. But they do do that, and I, I hate that. But, yeah, give me Miami minus four. 